everyone. All right, so I want to show you something that's absolutely game-changing when it comes to texturing Dare's characters. So with the latest update of Substance Painter, they've introduced a Udem workflow, which allows you to paint seamlessly on your characters. So you can see with this Genesis 8 character, before if you tried painting on Dare's characters, like over here there's a seam, you'd basically reach a seam and then you'd have to select another UV tile to continue painting that line. But with the Udem workflow, I can just paint seamlessly anywhere on my character with no limitations at all. So this is absolutely fantastic. And I want to show you how to set up a Genesis 3 and a Genesis 8 character so that you can start texturing them and painting seamlessly using the power of Substance Painter. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so before I get started, I actually want to give these guys some credit because we were discussing this on Twitter and we came to a conclusion to actually figure out how to get these Dares characters into Substance Painter. So thank you, Aaron. Thank you, our Junior Nelson. And thank you, Nick Visuals. We all came together to come to a conclusion on how to actually set this up. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so go ahead and open up Dares 3D and just so your user interface looks exactly the same as mine, you can go to Window, Workspace, select Layout and select Hollywood Boulevard. So on the left hand side over here, I'm under Actors and Wardrobes and Figures and by default you should have access to the Genesis 3 male and female and the Genesis 8 male and female. If you don't have this, just open up the Install Manager right, and log into the Install Manager and download the essentials for these characters so that we can uh, basically use the exact same characters and you can follow along with this tutorial. Alright, so preparing these DAS characters for export is extremely simple. Let's just go ahead and load in a Genesis 3 male. Right, so preparing the Gen 3 and the Gen 8 is a little bit different and the only difference is going to be the eyelashes because the Genesis 8 character has its eyelashes as a separate piece of geometry and when you export that out, the eyelashes actually gets merged with the face and that causes issues with painting. But with a Gen 3, there's no separate piece of geometry over here for the eyelashes, so this, this character is good to go. So to prepare this for Substance Painter with a Gen 3, all you have to do is go to File, Export, and on my desktop over here, I'm going to create a new folder. So I'll just call this Daz Toot. Okay, and you wanna create two folders over here. You wanna create a folder that's called No Texture, and we want to create a folder that contains the textures as well. So I'm going to save out the no texture version. So this is the texture, uh, this is the model that we're actually going to be using in Substance Painter. Okay, so I'll just say it's already named as no text. I'm saving out an OBJ. Very important, pay attention to these export settings. Make sure Collapse UV Tiles is not enabled and make sure Write Services is not enabled as well. Okay, very, very important that you do that. Click on accept. Okay, if you don't have those, if you don't follow along with those settings, it's gonna cause issues in Substance Painter. Now we wanna go ahead and save out a version that's got the textures applied to it. So here's the texture version. So I'll just call this text, click on save. And now you can go ahead and select right surfaces. So I want a version that actually contains all of these texture maps as well because I want to basically use that in Substance Painter. So this character is good to go. We can head over to Substance Painter and import it and I'll show you how to prepare everything so you can start painting. So before I head over to Substance Painter, I just want to show you how to prepare a Gen 8 character, which is the characters that I usually use. I'll always use Gen, uh, Genesis 8. So I'm going to load in a Gen 8 basic male. And remember what I mentioned about the eyelashes uh, being a little bit of an issue. And that's because Daz decided to make the eyelashes a separate node and a separate piece of geometry, which causes issues. So to get around this, we're going to be following what we did previously with the Gen 3 by saving out two versions. So the first version that I'm going to save out here is actually going to contain the eyelashes. So I'm not going to be deleting anything. Okay, so I'm going to basically go to export. I actually want to make sure Genesis 8 character is selected over there. So go to export and I'm going to create another folder over here. So I'll call this Daz Tute Gen 8. Okay. And just like we did previously, we'll have a no texture folder and a texture folder. Okay. So with the texture folder with a Gen 8, I still have my eyelashes. So I'm going to be saving that one out first. So I'll call this text OBJ I want to make sure right surfaces is enabled and I'm going to click on accept. So just let it export all of that out. And now to make sure I can actually paint on this character in Substance Painter and that there's no issues with the maps, I need to go ahead and actually delete these eyelashes. So just right click and click on delete. Now I can go ahead and export this out. 
right? Selected. So this is going to be my no texture version. All right, make sure this is disabled, right surfaces, and click on accept. So now you know how to prepare the files for a Gen 3 and a Gen 8. The only difference with the Gen 8 is that I had to delete the eyelashes. Okay, so I'm in Substance Painter and I'm using the latest version, which is 2020.2. Make sure you're using the latest version because you need access to the new UDEM support. Okay, you want to go to File New. So whether I'm importing the Gen 3 or the Gen 8 right now, it doesn't matter because we've already prepared the files. So the process over here will be exactly the same for Gen 3 or Gen 8. So I'll be using the Genesis 8 character. I'm going to go to Select. Okay, so I've got my DAS Gen 8. Now we want to import the No Texture version. Click on Open. And then, very important, by default that should be ticked off. You want to make sure you've got Use UV Tile Workflow enabled. So this allows us to use UDEMS and preserve UV Tile Layout per material to enable painting across tiles. Very important that that is selected. And then over here we can click on Add. And remember we saved out a version with textures. So if I go to the Texture folder, you can see we've got all of these maps. Now I can actually bring all of these maps. Just hold on Shift to select everything, click on Open, and click on OK. So now it's going to import our Genesis 8 character into Substance Painter, and there we go. So you'll see on the right over here, if I actually zoom out, we've got all of our UDEM tiles, there's seven of them, but there should actually be eight. Uh, when you use a Genesis 3 character, there's eight tiles because it actually exports out the tile for the eyelashes. But remember, we deleted the eyelashes because it causes issues with Genesis 8 characters. But everything here is set up and good to go. As long as you see this, and you see all of these UV tiles under the same group like this, numbered like this, you are good to go and you can actually start painting seamlessly on this character. And just to demonstrate quickly that you can paint seamlessly across this character, if I create a new fill layer and just make this red and then right click to create a black mask, you'll see if I start painting over here, I can now paint seamlessly. There's actually a seam on this character over here by the shoulders, but you can see I can paint right across that without any issues. And this is amazing. You could never do this before with DAS characters. You'd basically hit a roadblock over here and then you'd have to select another UV tile to continue painting uh, that line. So this is very liberating uh, that you can just paint freely like this. So that is amazing. I'm going to go ahead and delete the full layer. And if you actually want to apply those textures that we imported onto the character, so we can see it in Substance Painter, if you go to the project over here, you'll see we have all of these textures. So you want to create a full layer. And then over here, you'll see there's a base color under the properties. So let's start with the face. So just drag and drop that onto the base color. Now you can see it applies it onto the entire body. So we need to specify that this is for the face. So to do that, you'll see all of, you'll basically see this grid pattern over here. If you click on that, you'll see all of these corresponding numbers. Now we can see the face is 1001. So deselect everything else except for 1001. There we go. So that's just on the face. Now create another full layer. And then the next one is the torso. So drag and drop that into the base color. Click on the grid. And that's 1002. Okay, so do that for every single body part over here. I'll be doing that and then I'll resume from there. All right, so I've gone ahead and created these different layers. The only one I didn't apply is the eyes. I'm not really working on any eyes in uh, Substance Painter. And I don't feel like it's important because the eyes are already created and I can use that outside of the program. So you can see over here I've got full layers for the face, torso, the legs, the arms. And then I think this is the inside of the mouth. I actually didn't even need to create this full layer because we don't even see the inside of his mouth. So if you see your character like this, we need to create one more full layer. Okay. And you'll see if I hide this layer, we can actually see our entire character with all of those uh, texture maps applied onto it. So there we go. We know everything has been set up correctly. And if we go back to each full layer and you select this paint bucket tool, you can see that you can even control some of the roughness over here. So if you feel like it's too shiny, just control some of the roughness. And remember, make sure you're just selecting that paint bucket. Okay, so we did create a full layer over here. If I enable that again, it makes my entire character white. So if I wanted to paint, let's say some war paint on this character or some, or some tribal paint, like you see in the thumbnail, all I have to do on this full layer is right click and add a black mask. So now wherever I start painting, remember, and we're painting seamlessly, this is exactly how you can add some war paint. And I'll show you the brush uh, that I used for applying some paint on the character and then just a quick uh, tip on how to add some height uh, onto our brush stroke so it looks a little bit more realistic. 
Okay, so if you wanted to do some war paint, just make sure this is still selected so that we paint in with the black mask. Go to brushes, and if you scroll down over here, there's a brush that's called Kyle's Watercolor. Let me just click on that. It's Kyle's Watercolor. It's this brush that you see over here. So it's got some really nice texture to it. And obviously we're using a color, we're using a character that's a lot lighter in complexion. So if I was doing white war paint on him, it wouldn't stand out as much as the character you see from the thumbnail. That's obviously a darker complexion. So you can always just click on the paint bucket tool over here. And if I go to uniform color, we can maybe make this a lot darker. Okay. And since this character is in the A pose, also remember to click back on this icon to go back to the black mask. Since this character is in the A pose, I can actually activate symmetry over here. And now if I start painting on this character, all right, let's say I want to start over here. You can see it starts painting on both sides. So this is really cool and a very easy way to create some war paint. And now if I zoom in over here, you can see it's got this really nice texture. And to make this look a little bit more realistic, if we click on the paint bucket again, if we apply, if we apply just a little bit of height onto the stroke, you can see that it starts uh, lifting it off the surface and this just makes it look more realistic. Now you're probably wondering why this looks like it's such a low resolution and that's for the sake of performance in Substance Painter. By default it puts the resolution on 1K. So if you want to see this in a much higher resolution, you want to go to texture settings and just change the size over here. You can see I'm on the layer that's right at the top. Change the size over here to whatever you want, 2K or 4K, just to see this in better quality. You can see immediately that these brush strokes look way better once I start uh, increasing the size. Now remember this is going to take a hit on your performance but it's going to give you much better fidelity and quality uh, with your, your artwork over here. Now if I go back to layers, you can also click on the full layers over here and you can see it changed everything, every single layer in, a, in our stack over here to 4K resolution as long as I had the, the layer right at the top selected. Okay, so that's how you get better quality and this is just quickly how you can do some war paint uh, on your characters. I showed you the brush I'm using and just applying a little bit of height makes it look pretty cool. So I'm going to select that again. And again, we've got the UDEM workflow set up. So that, that is amazing. That's so liberating that I can just paint across this region. Because like I said, there's a seam over here, guys. But you can paint over that. It doesn't matter. The seam does not matter. All right, the program is basically giving you all of this freedom to do whatever you want. Okay, so go ahead, maybe put some war paint on these characters, do whatever you want, start texturing them. But I thought I'll just show you uh, how to set this up. And just for some added realism, you'll see that there's a skins category over here. So there's a whole lot of different skin uh, bump maps for different regions of the body. You can see the cheek, the eyebrows. Uh, but we definitely want some additional detail on here because the skin looks very flat. So you can drag something like just a basic human bumpy skin right at the top. So drag that in there. Now you can see we lost our texture. So just scroll down over here to attributes. Sorry, not attributes. You'll see that under material there's a color enabled. Just disable that and you'll get the original texture back. So you'll notice right now that uh, this map is being scaled really large according to the different regions. So if you wanted to, you could apply the bumpy skin like this just on the face or use very uh, individual maps. But I can also click on the paint bucket tool over here and just scroll up until I find my UV transformation scale. Maybe just scale this down a bit. All right, I don't want it to be too intense, uh, but this is just going to add some additional surface detail onto the skin of the character. And it's doing that directly in Substance Painter. You can see with it off and with it on. It just adds that additional detail on top of the character. And another thing to keep in mind is that the layer order over here actually matters. You'll notice that our paint strokes over here no longer have that shiny or glossiness applied onto it. So if I want that to be reapplied, just drag this above the human bumpy skin. Okay, and there we go. We've got the glossiness back on these paint strokes. All right, so that's the end of this video. You know how to set this up. You know how to start painting these characters. Go out there, have fun, experiment with the different brushes and different materials. You can see there's even some gold materials that you can start painting 
uh, on these characters as well you can put gold you can put bronze just have fun uh, when it comes to texturing but now that we can paint seamlessly on characters is extremely liberating and i'm so happy they introduced this so maybe the last thing i want to mention is that you can render your character directly in substance painter with iray you can go ahead and play around with some of the settings here just click on that camera icon or you can go to file and click on export textures if you actually want to get this out of the program so another thing I want to mention before you actually export this remember you want to put it at the resolution that you want to export out so remember like I mentioned earlier under texture set settings as long as you're on the layer right at the top if we change this to 4k it's going to make sure everything underneath it is at 4k resolution and then you can go ahead and export this out so just let it apply the 4k resolution if we go and just to make sure if we go we can see human skin all of this is on 4k so now you would go ahead to file export textures and we'll be ready to start exporting this out of the program right so now you can go ahead and actually choose an output template over here or you can see there's a whole lot of different output templates over here if you're using it for specific programs I'm just going to leave this on documents channels plus normal plus AO by default and if I click on list of exports you can see it's going to export out 49 textures it's quite a lot of images uh, I actually wish substance painter found a way to merge some of these um, materials together but it is going to export out 49 textures but you'll see everything is labeled correctly so you'll know exactly which texture is for which region remember like we say we showed earlier 1001 is the face so you'll know exactly what's being exported out so if I click on export it's going to go ahead prepare everything and export out 49 images I know it's quite a lot of images guys uh, but this is just how uh, substance painter handles the exporting process I do stand to be corrected maybe there is a better way to optimize exporting out all of these maps but then again it is exporting out everything for you so you you will be good to go so there we go 100 percent just wait for that to finish it's writing the finalization and there we go so now if you click on open output directory yes every single map 40 well there's 42 so there's 42 items in here and uh, there we go so you can see here, the, here are the main textures right these are our base color for the face and the torso and this was on the arms I think this is the legs this for the legs you can see it, it looks really strange how it's merged everything together but when you apply it onto the character everything is still going to look perfectly fine you can see that it's given us some height maps as well it's given us metallic normal maps that we can use you usually use the open GL versions when you're using the normal maps and you even have roughness maps for the different regions you can see 1001 1002 and everything is good to go so you've got all of your maps you've painted seamlessly across the character and you've unlocked total and complete freedom okay so that's going to be the end of the tutorial now this is a custom Genesis 8 character but everything that you've seen in this tutorial was used to set up this character you can see we've got all the Udom setup over here the tribal paint I showed you which brush I'm using how to apply a height onto the paint strokes as well I just changed the environment map over here so I'm using this Corsica beach I uh, adjust the rotation and I just increase the focal length on the camera and that that's about it but everything else is exactly the same so this Udom workflow is very liberating the fact that you can paint anywhere without you know running into any issues with the seams is fantastic so I'm really really happy that they introduced this Udom workflow so if you have any questions write them down below and uh, let me know what you think All right as always thank you so much for the support on this channel I truly appreciate it stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye